What's poppin'? My name is Richie and today I have one trick slash tip for every device in Fortnite Creative. Okay, not every device. I had to put a few together and for a few I could just could not find any tips. But this video took so long so I would highly appreciate any likes and comments. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. If you put the ATK in between two vents, it can work as a moving bounce pad. If you put the bolt inside a barrier and turn on the box hollow option, you can have a standing turret, which is a lot better than the original one. You can use the new prop damage volume basically as a prop mutator zone. All you have to do is put down all the damage, maybe make a safe team, and then you can just use it as a mutator zone. The new HUD controller actually leaves a flare behind, which I personally think looks really cool, so you can use that in game. Bounce pad allows zombies and sentries to interact with it. That means you can't have jumping zombies. It's not possible to put in your own fishes in the fishing zone. All you have to do is put in the fishes that you like and turn on the device inventory setting in the settings. For not only using the race manager and checkpoints for races only, the race manager and checkpoints work perfectly fine in adventure maps and other maps where you have to guide people through your areas. There's even an option to turn off the racing heart in this device. The shooting range gallery can be perfectly used for jump scares. All you have to do is put the starting position to down and make sure that you have a proximity range. This one is an old one, but I still see a lot of people not knowing about this. The hoverboard can actually drive on the music tiles, which you can find in the music gallery, which is pretty cool. The ball is not only one of the most unique vehicles that we had in Fortnite, but it can also be used very nicely for shooting gallery, especially with the new options to change the health. The health power-up can actually be used for some quite unique art which you can create. Basically any power-up can do this, but the health power-up has very cool options. Have you ever tried building an entire house out of barriers? It's not possible, and even cooler you can make it disappear and appear. The player reference device is definitely a very cool device, but with the three options where you can change the player model, you can actually create some animations with it. You can even automate it if you want to. Player spawn is one of the best devices to actually force people from the game start into something. For example, you could force them in a car or a teleporter to immediately start a race, teleport them to a location where they need to be. You ever wondered how to hear the audio selection from the speakers? All you have to do is punch them. They will immediately play the sound that you have selected. You should definitely use the radio more, especially to make sounds that are not existent in the game, such as fire and other stuff more realistic. Did you know that the explosive barrels actually had an implemented text? All you have to do is change the help bar style to badge. The text even changes with the direction you're looking at, which I think is pretty cool. Did you know that if you remove the bottom part of any trap with the trick tower, you can actually walk through them? Not too long ago, zombies got an update where they always prefer doors over walls. That means you can lead zombies through your map if you have doors which are open or can be opened. If you ever wanted to move sentries, make sure that you have a trick tower under the sentry device and you make sure that the zombie lands on something that can move it, such as the boost pad or the bouncer. Did you know that in the tracker, if you put the same channels in increased target value and complete when, you actually can create an endless leaderboard, which always gives the first person the lead. So it will always rank up one if you kill someone, or whatever you put in there. The billboard is probably one of the most used devices in any map, but did you know that you can also use it as a one-way wall? All you have to do is basically turn on the background color. One side will be look-through, and the other one will be solid. Now, holograms are pretty easy to understand, but did you know that the hologram clock actually changes the time with the in-game time? Which is pretty cool, I think. If you ever wanted to spam items out of an item spawner, all you have to do is turn on consistently spawning and also make sure that you put it sideways. If you turn it 100 degrees, the items will still spawn on the top. If you ever feel useless, remember that you can put wood in a vending machine which you can buy with wood. Item grenades are definitely one of the most used items in Fortnite Creative, but did you know that the items that you put in this device will always spawn in the order that you put them in? So that means if you put in a rifle first, the rifle will always come in the first slot. Coming from one of the most used devices, probably one of the least used devices, and that is the Elimination Manager. This device actually shows you what it can do when you just look at it. It drops an item for people that are dead, which they didn't have before. Pretty cool. Okay, for this device, I actually have a question. Did anybody use this device ever? The Consumable Gallery has some pretty unique items and special effects, but did you know that the apple can actually fall and it also has rolling animation? So you can put it in an actual tree and let it fall from the tree. 
The Creeping Cardboard Box is probably one of the more least used devices because it has so much memory, but you can also jump higher in it and then you could jump normally. Well, the matchmaking portal seems like a very useless device, but you can actually put some really cool art in it. All you have to do is find a matchmaking code, which uh, has some custom art, and then put it in there and use it as art. If you ever want to have a flawless transition walking from one teleporter into another, all you have to do is put them just a little bit in the floor. The other platform. Don't use this device. Use the terrain piece instead, it is much cheaper and it also is more adjustable. If you ever had trouble moving the vents while they're invisible, make sure to just put a wood piece down, copy both of them and then move them to the tile that you want. This is so much easier and it also gives a clean copy of the other one. A lot of people probably didn't know this, but you can use the bumpers as a trigger device. All you have to do is put on a channel in the activation and it works just fine as a normal trigger. And it also looks a little bit fancier. The lock device not only works on normal doors, it also works on vent doors and it also works on special doors, such as the bookshelf one that you can find in the Weeping Woods gallery. The condition button is pretty cool to display weapons. All you have to do is basically change it to hologram only and also make sure that you put in the right color for the right rarity. If you turn the capture area upside down, it actually gives you a pretty clean edge on the ring, which personally I think looks like a really cool barrier. The blue colored objectives devices work really well as windows. You can even turn them on and off, so it looks like you have some lighting in your window. The color changing tile is one of the older devices, but you can actually create some really unique floors which I haven't seen too much in games. All you have to do is basically turn a team which you like the color of and then make sure that you disable it so it doesn't change anymore. The class selector is pretty cool to use as a reset button. All you have to do is just turn on the right settings and boom, you have a reset button. Team setting and inventory device is the only device which can change actually team names. So what you can do here is just type in any team name that you want and it will display in the scoreboard. The best way to pick up power-ups is to use the mutator zone. So as soon as someone walks in there, the power-up gets selected. In the advanced storm beacon, the first zone or the first storm will actually always get ignored. So you never have the first zone of the first storm, so you can actually skip it. The basic storm beacon always overrules the advanced ones. So if you have an advanced storm beacon and then put a basic one, the zone of the basic one counts first. The attribute trigger is best used if you want to create a progression system, such as getting one kill grants you that weapon, getting two kills grants you a better weapon. Using the perception trigger in combination with a spicy prop like this one from the Dust of the Pro Dinner and Prop Gallery gives you a map that just a little extra detail. The RNG device is not only good for randomizing things, but it's also one of the only devices that can actually submit signals without the player touching it. One of the most overlooked options in the trigger device is actually the option to trigger via items, which means that you can actually drop items on this device, which then activate a trigger signal. The sequencer is not only good to activate music tiles and activate triggers, but it can also hover the hoverboard up and down like an elevator, and it can also send out damage which was basically the only way in how people used to do Zone Wars maps back in the days. The Mutator Zone is a pretty versatile device, but you can also use the Zone to create some really cool VFX. Reminds me a little bit of iRobot. And last but not least, the campfires can actually heal cars in Fortnite Creative, which is a little bit weird since fire should usually damage them. But hey, and that is it with the video. Hopefully you could learn something. This video took so long to make. I would highly appreciate any likes and comments. And with that being said, I'll see you guys back in the next video. Bye.